Typically when I watch games, uh, soccer teams warm up in the same manner. Um, and especially with girls teams, everyone seems to be using some variation of the FIFA 11 warm up, um, which is intended to try to reduce injuries. Uh, this weekend, I noticed one team uh, incorporate some different exercises and exercises that I thought were great. So first, the team did somersaults. Now somersaults are something that I would uh, use with my basketball teams. Um, except the hardwood floors and we live in a litigious society so uh, you know I'm fearful of a player getting injured for anything that can be construed as a non-basketball activity and uh, you know giving you know a parent uh, you know leeway to file a lawsuit based on negligence or something so uh, not something that I'm necessarily recommending but something that I do think uh, has value uh, especially for young young children um, you know, to develop their full movement potential and all of their basic movement skills. Um, next, they did uh, shoulder to shoulder challenges in the air. So, two players would jump and bump shoulders, um, you know, kind of like you see NBA players doing, uh, you know, when they're celebrating after a basket or something like that. So, um, you know, a lot of people would uh, disagree with this and say, well, you know, somebody could get injured in warm ups or something like that. And that's entirely the point is these are, uh, you know, movements or actions that happen in games. Uh, and to ignore that fact and not practice these uh, actions because there may be an injury involved um, probably puts the players at a greater risk of injury. Because in this, in the, in the warm-up envir environment, um, it was controlled and there was less intensity in a game environment and there was no ball involved so they could uh, use some visual information when they're landing. In a game, uh, it's uncontrolled, uh, it's a higher intensity so the players are likely trying to jump higher, there's probably more physical contact, they're opponents so there could be you know the threat of dirty play or uh, you know just more physical play than if you're just trying to you know bump shoulders with your own teammate in a warm-up. Uh, so there's, uh, and you know, generally when you're, you're going for a uh, challenge like this, your eyes are up because you're focused on heading a soccer ball or in a basketball situation, you know, rebounding a basketball. Your eyes are going to be up, so, you're, so your eyes and your visual system can't um, relay information for the landing. So you have to, uh, you know, rely more on your kinesthetic sense um, to anticipate the landing as opposed to your visual sense. So... Uh, yes, by all means, this is something that compared to a typical warm-up could cause an injury, but that's the exact point, is to use warm-ups and to use practice to prepare players for what's going to happen in a game. And to ignore the fact that these are actions that happen in a game is to predispose players to injuries. Uh, the third one that they used was, uh, you know, they just shuffled laterally and kind of, uh, you know, holding hands with a teammate and kind of uh, pulling and pushing back and forth with a teammate lightly. You know, they weren't trying to yank each other's arms out, you know, or fall down or anything. It was just a little bit of, you know, kind of tug of war as they shuffled. Again, it's another basic movement um, and adding a little bit of something extra to the movement. Um, now, you're not necessarily going to move and push and pull in the same way uh, during a game, uh, but that added you know upper body movement increases the need for core strength uh, you know increases uh, the upper body and lower body moving together uh, also the dissociation of the upper and lower body so you know you're moving laterally with your lower body while your arms are pushing and pulling um, you know in and out or you know in the sagittal plane so i think there's uh, value in these types of exercises that can off balance players uh, and then teach players how to regain balance um, as opposed to simply putting them in easier exercises uh, that are used as warm ups that approximate some of the movements used in games but not always the external stressors that are going to be involved in games. So I think these are three examples of exercises that can help develop uh, 
skills to kind of to the next level. So taking something from the basic movements that need to be learned and then adding some kind of external stimulus so that it takes the next step, uh, which is on the path towards what's going to happen in a game. So it's not quite as intense, uh, you know, probably not as great amplitude on the jump. So, you know, this visual system, there's not a ball involved. Uh, you know, so there, so it's not entirely uh, game-like or task representative, but it's taking the physical abilities from, you know, simple jumping and landing to the next step, okay, and preparing players a little bit better for the actions that will happen in the game.